<clears throat> Good evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I'm the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Previously, I was a financial analyst and financial journalist. Tonight, <clears throat> I want to speak to you on a more personal level. Tomorrow is the <clears throat> Super Tuesday primaries, and Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders are running on the Democratic side. <clears throat> And Hillary Clinton has an enormous landmine uh, sitting in front of her of her misconduct in Libya. Uh, and it's all quite provable now because of the emails. So if you vote for Hillary and take Bernie out of the race and she ends up running against the Republicans, there is going to be a feast. <clears throat> because Bernie has been diplomatic. He said when asked about what he would have done differently in Libya, he wouldn't have been so eager for regime change. He would have been a little bit more patient. These are exactly the right sentiments to express. Because Islamic State and Al-Qaeda flourish in places where we've put the hammer down. In Iraq and in Libya, and in the case of Syria, we, uh, Obama and Clinton sold $312 billion worth of weapons to overseas uh, states. A large amount of that went to Saudi Arabia and Qatar. This, according to Mearsheimer, who is one of our great uh, strategists, <clears throat> allows a regional hegemon, in other words, a local tough guy in the neighborhood, Saudi Arabia, to roam. It gives you freedom to roam when you're not pinned down and when you're heavily armed. <laughs> so it's been through our uh, cooperation with Saudi Arabia and Turkey that uh, Syria has been undermined. <clears throat> so these emails tell us a lot of things, these damn emails. Uh, one of them is that on March 18th, so February 17th, 2011, there was a protest in Benghazi and some people died in this protest. Did it spread to become a mass rebellion? Not exactly. Was it simply jihadists as the people that are really against us say? No, there were other people that wanted change besides that. But according to the, one of the most strident critics of Gaddafi in Libya, uh, Mabruk Derbash, which the Libyans that support Gaddafi consider a traitor, even Mabruk Derbash um, indicates that once uh, Clinton started to cheat, basically, in, in the view of a lot of analysts, which is to have taken this United Nations resolution, which was supposed to protect the people of Benghazi, regardless of whether they were under threat or not, and they basically was no uh, chance of any kind of a, uh, a extermination or genocide. There would have been a, a normal action of a country trying to put down a rebellion, um, whether you like this or not. It certainly wasn't going to be any sort of genocide. Um, and she took this and started to attack units, started to advocate for the attack and destruction of units, facilitate the attack and destruction of units that were at rest, that were encamped, instead of units who were actually actively engaging the rebels. There weren't very many rebels to begin with. So uh, we know that this was on February 17th. On March 18th, there was an attempt by the son of Gaddafi, Saif, to establish a conference call to try to negotiate peace. Clinton never accepted that conference call. She instructed them not to conduct it. So at this point, what has happened to Libya uh, is, is unthinkable. There are daily unspeakable tragedies how many civilians were harmed by Gaddafi in their run-up to your bombardment? A hundred or two hundred? And how many have been harmed since? A million or two million? In fact, the whole nation has been irreparably harmed, its treasures looted, its synagogues and mosques vandalized. According to this professor from the University of Tripoli, Dr. Uh, Mabruk Derbash, uh, it appears that West is essentially aiding the jihadists in Libya to some extent. Um, there's two governments in Libya, 
uh, one that uh, is more a reformist oriented and one that's more religious conservative wanting to bring Sharia law. So to continue, she refused to take the call. Uh, these emails of an email from Anne Marie Slaughter uh, shows her congratulating Hil on Hillary on having convinced Obama to intervene militarily. According to Mabruk Derbash, uh, after the election where 80% of the vote in the first election did go against the Islamists and towards the reformists, if we can say it, uh, she uh, apparently put pressure on them to increase the amount of hardliners re represented. Now, to justify this, this would be because the men with guns, the hardliners, weren't going to play at all if they didn't get more representation, and she was probably trying to keep the whole thing together. We know through these emails and through other sources that she conspired to funnel weapons into Libya, which is against the uh, UN resolution. How else are they going to topple Gaddafi if they don't bring weapons in? So there was a, a, quite a bit of activity. Uh, in the case of Benghazi, what the Americans think of as Benghazi, the four dead there, there was a, uh, for every State Department official leaving Benghazi after the attack, there were five or six CIA contractors. The place was swimming with CIA. What were they doing there? The point is that Sanders isn't going to get us in these kind of wars again. And Libya, uh, Clinton is already advocating a no-fly zone, which she broke most of the provisions of, depending on how you argue it, but certainly the spirit of it in Libya, and created enormous tragedy. Every day, boys are being raped by the Islamic State in Sirte. Every week, somebody's hauled out of a private prison, dead. There are 15,000 people in private prisons now, political prisoners. Uh, the largest archaeological treasure in the world was looted from Benghazi, uh, worth billions of dollars, a hoard of gold from the time of Alexander the Great. Um, so uh, we don't know what these uh, CIA agents were doing precisely in Benghazi, um, and we need to know. But if you vote for Hillary tomorrow, you are, um, and, and when she cuts into the general race, First of all, the question is, who is this woman that has allowed such terrible destruction to occur to Libya um, and has not taken ownership or even apologized? Um, and uh, secondly, what do you think is going to happen to her in the general with this email uh, situation? This email server will be a gift that keeps on giving, and the Libyan conflict, which the press will not cover, will be a gift that keeps on giving. Once the Republicans, uh, such as whether it's Trump or Cruz or even Kasich uh, or Rubio, uh, get into uh, the race, they're going to take her apart. And we could end up with Donald Trump as our president. Uh, so, for the love of God, uh, vote for Bernie Sanders tomorrow. This private email server even has uh, had many classified emails. There are people who will never vote for her uh, that are from the military and intelligence services because they know if they had done this that they would be in a uh, lot of trouble. Um, although apparently Condoleezza Rice and Colin Powell also did, but it's not to handle classified material. And there's a lot of classified material. The entire main report on the future of Libya is entirely redacted. Why? Now, the reasons that they set up for setting up this no-fly zone, which was used to utterly annihilate everyone in their armed forces, there were accusations of aerial attacks against civilians. These were unfounded. Viagra rape, unfounded. Uh, these were actually stapled to the uh, UN resolution and have all been found to be false. How did this propaganda, which has blown wildly out of portion, uh, suddenly flood the media unquestioningly and be used as the basis of this. But there's no, uh, the country has been bombed and destroyed and there have been thousands of rapes as a result of the intervention and there have been horrific attacks against civilians as a direct result of Clinton's intervention as policy. 
We've also found out from Mabrouk Derbosh that uh, he believes, as others do, that the French intelligence services actually put the final bullet in Gaddafi's head. This is because Gaddafi knew too many secrets. Nobody in the West wanted him to be able to talk, but it was essential for the Libyans, if you do want to give credit to the people who wanted to overthrow him, to have him around to find out what he knew, what he had done, where the money was, what had happened. So it destroyed Libya's history, and that's what these attacks are. They're attacks on history and culture. There was never any accountability for these false claims, and I was talking to my dad. Uh, there is no mechanism to uh, sue or bring uh, to court uh, the Security Council. There's no mechanism to hold the Security Council accountable, apparently. My father's a professor of history. Every previous member of the Libyan government alive uh, has had arrest warrants issued against them to make it impossible for them to organize or to protest. On trumped up charges by Interpol and the International Criminal Court, people like Dr. Moussa Ibrahim, people like one of their former television personalities. It's a sweeping operation. During the whole attack, the progressive voices were silent. Democracy Now! was silent. Rachel Maddow cheered for the war. John Stewart celebrated upon the death of Gaddafi. And we found out now that there's new crimes being compiled of the sexual victimization of male boys by Islamic State in the areas that they rule. So bear in mind what sort of horrible violations are going on. Gaddafi warned that Libya would be taken over by Al-Qaeda and we didn't uh, believe him, we laughed at him. And in fact, according to Dr. Mabrouk Derbash, you might as well call the western state of Libya Al-Qaeda. He claims all airports are controlled by Al-Qaeda, at least he did as of 2014. Uh, there was no way to get in the country without being checked by Al-Qaeda. There are private unaccountable prisons all over the country, where as I said, people are dragged out on a weekly basis, dead. Uh, a third of the population of the country has fled. Uh, two million people, according to the Prime Minister of Tunisia. Yet in a catch-22, the UN won't allow them to be registered as refugees, apparently, according again to Dr. Mabrouk Derbash, whose uh, information I will be posting. Imagine having made the case to bomb Libya and actually having foretold what would come to pass. Like, uh, let us pass this resolution. As a result, a third of the country will be run by the Islamic State. A third of it will be run by Al Qaeda. There will be daily uh, assassinations of police officers and army officers, settling old scores to uh, completely crush any uh, retaliation. Uh, there are uh, 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 the uh, uh, to a third of the population has fled. Imagine if somebody did this to the United States. That would be 75 million people would have fled. It would be a half a million people uh, being in prison, tortured for their political beliefs. And what a terrible irony that there were some voices that were foretelling this. I could see it in March of 2011. Dennis Kucinich could see it but it was indeed like crickets. Then only after Gaddafi's death did the BBC start to release information about Lockerbie, the many problems with Lockerbie case, the payoffs to the witnesses, millions of dollars, unreliable witnesses, these tailors from Malta, the tampered evidence, clear irrefutable evidence that the CIA uh, altered uh, the bomb mechanism uh, to make it look like one that could be linked to the Libyans. The break-in of the Heathrow Airport, the whole story of the bomb coming from Malta breaks down if the Heathrow Airport had been broken into. And a, 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 I hadn't seen any of this coming out from the BBC until after Gaddafi was dead. Tomorrow, if we don't do anything, Hillary Clinton will either be defeated by the Republicans in the fall, and we may have a, per, a nightmarish person like Donald Trump who uh, on a good day, can be an amusing guy and say things that we like. Uh, he says no person should die on the streets, that we shouldn't get involved in regime change, that these trade deals are killing us. There's a lot of pleasant things that he's saying. But 
uh, he has no experience in office and he has run a far too uh, a colorful and high-risk campaign to make uh, uh, many people very comfortable. I think there'll be a mass exodus of uh, foreign uh, workers in the U.S. Uh, if uh, Trump is elected, highly skilled people. Um, uh, if she does win, uh, even despite the email scandal, we will have brought someone dripping in blood and laughing with impunity. Because it's such an irony that she did such a magnificent job at those 11 hours against the Republicans and never was a single relevant question asked. So tomorrow, please consider all this before you pull the lever for Hillary Clinton and consider that Bernie Sanders as a benign and wise person who will not take us into these wars. And remember, almost when people say, well, what's your plan to fight the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda? Well, his plan would have never had them even be born in the first place. These have been born, these are monstrous abortions of former wrongs, as Winston Churchill said about Hitler. Winston Churchill had the insight to see that Hitler had been created by the terrible unfairness of the Versailles Treaty uh, uh, saddling the Germans with debt and laying them prostrate, uh, humiliating them, and creating a deep burning in a very powerful civilization. My name is Alexander Hagen. Vote for Bernie Sanders, and good night and good luck.